Hey everyone and welcome back. In today's community conversation, we have District 8 City Rep Chris Canales. And Chris represents parts of West El Paso. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. So tomorrow City Council is expected to discuss some impact fees. And these go towards paying water and some wastewater things. Explain to us what those are and how much that increase would be. Sure, so impact fees aren't something that the general public pays. Uh, these are fees that are charged to developers when they're developing on the outskirts of the city. This is the Far East, the Far Northwest, and the Far Northeast. Um, basically, these fees cover the cost of extending new water infrastructure out into those areas. Okay. Um, currently, the rest of us who pay water bills uh, in the core of the city, we subsidize about 90% of the cost of that new infrastructure that has to be built to serve these new uh, these new developments, mm -hmm. and so the impact fees would be charged to developers to offset that. Okay. Uh, I think it's important that people understand the connection between the increases in water bills recently and the growth that keeps happening out further and further and further. So they have to extend all those pipes for water and wastewater further and further out, and it's more expensive for the rest of us. Right. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about that. So obviously with this specific discussion and when a decision is made later on, taxpayers will not be impacted, correct? Correct, yeah, there's no impact to taxpayers. Um, now, looking at ratepayers, people who pay water bills, there probably will be an impact and that impact would likely be a decrease in your water bill. Um, like I said, right now we're covering a lot of the costs to extend that infrastructure. This would move those costs to the developers of, of those new developments um, and they would pay the fees instead of us covering the costs on our water bills. So no taxpayer impact, but what is the impact on the city when these uh, fees increase? Um, there's no real impact to the city either, right? This is El Paso water, which is uh, run it's separately separate from the city. Okay. Um, so again, it's, it's kind of just a give and take between people's water bills and what the developers have to pay when they're connecting these new uh, these new developments to the water system. What are some of those concerns that people, you, you just talked to us about some of your constituents are writing to you about, you know, the fees and their concerns. What are they, what are they saying? Yeah, people hear the word fees and I think they, yeah. they're afraid that they're the ones who are going to have to pay the fees. Um, but in this case, the, the fees are charged to developers. Impact fees are paid by developers. Uh, it's, it's not borne by the, the people who are paying water bills. And so I think that's an important distinction for, for people to understand. Uh, I know fees is a scary word right. sometimes, but you will not be paying the fees. Okay. Uh, the, the fees are paid by the developers. All right, Chris, thank you for clarifying that for us. And, you know, another topic we wanted to discuss, some people in your district, they are maybe worried about rezoning in your neighborhood. We're specifically talking about regarding low-income development. Can you explain to our viewers what rezoning means and then what the process looks like and then how can the community provide impact if that's something that they would like to do? Sure. So the Housing Authority um, has, has proposed a new... Uh, development on a property that it really is it's in my neighborhood it's just kind of down by the end of my street um, and that means something specific so rezoning is just changing the allowable use of a property um, so that's the process that they're going for going uh, through they just submitted an application to the city and uh, the city has scheduled a hearing on it uh, they actually delayed that hearing by a month so that the the housing authority can have meetings with the community uh, to explain a little bit better um, yeah, I'll say, and, and I, I put out a, a letter to, yep. to my constituents early, uh, earlier in the month uh, that, that I, I support this kind of development and I support it anywhere else in, in the city, but I support it in my neighborhood too. Um, I, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what this type of affordable housing development means and what it is. Um, what the Housing Authority is proposing is a development that serves, it's what's called 50 to 80 percent of the area median income. So uh, if the average El Pasoan is earning, you know, that's 100 percent, this is people earning 50 to 80 percent of that. For a family of four in El Paso, that's 30 to 48 thousand dollars. I don't think families earning 30 to 48 thousand dollars is what people are imagining when that's they hear income. affordable housing or low income housing development. Um, and so, you know, understandably, they're, they're concerned about what the impact on the neighborhood will be. But I encourage people to come to the meetings when the Housing Authority has their meetings, to come to the City Plan Commission meeting, okay. uh, to learn a lot more about 
what's being proposed and what it is and what it isn't. Well, the impact on them. I think the biggest mm -hmm. thing was traffic in the area, which I think is almost inevitable when you're growing a neighborhood. But I think they were also concerned about uh, the devaluation of their properties or their homes as well. Yeah, and when this type of uh, affordable housing development has happened in other areas, uh, there just hasn't been that, uh, that impact, impact on, on property values. I think the most comparable one is the Medano Heights uh, apartments, which is near Red Road and I-10. Okay. Um, for the most part, it unless is. you know it's there, y you would never know. It blends in like any other apartment building okay. um, in a neighborhood. Awesome. Some great information. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And of course, we'll put this entire community conversation along with a Rep Canales' contact info for your constituents there on kfoxtv.com. Yes, Chris. Thank you so much for being here and spending part of your morning with us. Now you're very busy. We want to switch Thanks. gears on over now.